Um, so I'm Yumina Bibi, I'm an assistant head teacher at a school in East London, in Newham Forest Gate Community School. And I am in love with words. I wouldn't be the head of English if I wasn't. Um, and I really see the power of words and I've seen it throughout my whole life. Um, I've seen the power of words in our house. We grew up in a house uh, kind of, uh, we did very little, but what we did have was a love of reading and a love of words. And I was very lucky to grow up with uh, siblings who took me to the library and allowed me just to sit in the corner with my hundreds of books, like a little bit like Matilda and just devour um, those books. And what we I'm finding now as an assistant head teacher and a head of English is that our students need the same thing. Sometimes our students won't have access to the books that I did when I was younger. And we as teachers, uh, particularly as English teachers, but also teachers of literacy, need to provide that for our students. So I'm going to go through some of the strategies um, that we've been looking at and we've been using at my school um, in order to empower our students to become confident and articulate um, in their in their speech, but also in their writing. So what does the research show? I sh um, say, I became a bit obsessed um, with uh, kind of explicit vocabulary instruction when I went to a teach me, Johnny, um, Johnny's teach me in uh, Forest Gate. And he, I was introduced to this uh, text called Bringing Words to Life, uh, which really explores robust vocabulary instru instruction. And then in 2018, I went to a research ed event in Stratford where I saw Alex Quigley speak for his keynote on closing the vocabulary gap. That was before the book had even entered. And he talked, and they talk essentially about this kind of tier of vocabulary. Some of us probably have heard about it um, as it's become more famous uh, more recently, but really focused on that tier two vocabulary, the high frequency words that are in written text but are less common in speech, and really thinking about how we teach them because we know we're teaching the tier three vocabulary because it's subject specific. We are teaching the tier one vocabulary because it's high frequency in speech, but that tier two vocabulary needs to be taught explicitly, Becketel and Alex Quigley suggest. So what have we been doing at my school and what have I been doing within my own classroom practice? Well, this is based on the research from Alex Quigley and Becketel. Um, the first thing is to teach our students how to pronounce those words explicitly. And I use a website called Collins Dictionary to do that. We get them to write the word out. We provide them with lots of student friendly explanations. Um, Actually, before I discovered this research, all I was doing is giving the students the explanations, but there were words in there that they didn't understand. So it's really hard for them to understand tier two vocabulary when they does, there's words in the explanation that they don't understand as well. So really important in, in that is to give our students student friendly explanations and that they understand and giving them multiple meaningful examples in different contexts. And by providing our students with student examples and then clarifying those multiple meanings but because what again I was finding is lots of our students knew what the word meant but then they were using it in the wrong context and it was about us as teachers really providing them with multiple opportunities to access those words and understand those words and then giving them opportunities to use those words effectively and accurately and, and, and parts of the uh, kind of research talks about solidifying the introduction of word meanings. So what then do we do as teachers? Do we just teach them this one word incredulous and then just think they're going to just internalize it? Of course not. I and mean, that's what I had been doing before I discovered the research. So what they suggest is actually providing students with word associations. Um, so which word goes with a uh, gift to build a new hospital, for example, or getting the students to associate newly learned words with context and activities from their own experiences. And that's what really, really has helped me, particularly as, as a learner uh, with EAL needs, uh, but also as a student who's dyslexic, you know, struggles with things like spelling of words and understanding words in context, providing examples, but also non-examples, um, and then exploring relationships among words. So what have we done then as a department? Um, well, we've really focused on vocabulary teaching. So our wonderful, um, leaders in our English department, uh, Imam Mahmoud, I'm going to give them a shout out, um, Ray Mead, um, really focused on embedding tier two vocabulary within our MTPs, within our curriculum. And it's just something we do now. And it's part of our starter activities, both our SPAC starters and our memory starters. So we explicitly teach, We've uh, as a department, we've decided, and, and Iman and Ray did this, they decided for every single unit of work, in seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, there were going to be 10 uh, keywords that are taught by every teacher. 
so that by the end of that year, the students for every unit of work have tier two vocabulary that they know explicitly, that they've encountered again and again and again. And we use things like spag starters or do now activities to really check their understanding. So we say we've taught the word magnanimous, and then we'll ask them to really just kind of explore that word. We'll explain why you think that adjective magnanimous best describes Shylock, for example. Getting them to think about um, scaling, so really understanding the, the vocabulary and the nuances of that word. So, for example, something that I do in my classroom is, say, if we're looking at Curly's wife and we explore kind of different ways in which we can describe her, why does Simon decide to choose these specific words to describe her as opposed to those specific words to describe her and really getting into the heart of vocabulary and understanding keywords and tier two vocabulary? This is just the structure of way, the way in which we do things in our department. So, as I said, we've explicitly identified key words that students will know, tier two words that students will know by the end of the year. Um, we've got it in this format. So it's, and it's, again, based on the research by Becca Tell and Alex Quigley. So we give them the key word. We teach them how to pronounce it. Um, we have explanations that are student friendly. We expose them to lots of examples and then we give them synonyms. And then what we might do is test them on that. So week one, we, we get them to learn the words. We get them to use the words. But then week two, we might take the explanations away or the examples away. And then they have to be able to create their own examples, but in the context. And that's really, really key as part of vocabulary instruction, that we teach our students the context of those words. Again, I, we might, what, one of the things we, we look at is vocabulary from text. So say for studying an inspector course, these words come up in this, this is in the stage direction to describe the inspector in an inspector course. What if our students don't know what massiveness, solidity and purposefulness means? How are then we going to help them meet that learning objective or that key objective we call it? I can analyse language choices when they don't even know what those key words mean. So what do we, what might we do? we might teach them what those words mean. We explicitly teach them what those words mean in student-friendly explanations. We provide them with lots of examples and they have multiple kind of examples, both examples and non-examples. We give them synonyms because then when it comes to analyzing, it's a little bit easier. They know the words now, okay, so I know that word, what that word means. So, right, why does Prusi describe, you know, use the adjective massiveness to describe the inspector? Why not another word? And really getting them to think about the nuance of, of writer's choices. Because then when it comes to them writing for paper two, question five, or paper one, question five, creative writing, they're then able to understand and think about their own choices as as their writers when they're writing. So really thinking about how vocabulary helps with understanding text, but also how they can then use it in their own writing to express themselves, to be confident and articulate individuals. And it's something I've become obsessed with. Oh no, my image. Um, I'm a bit obsessed with vocabulary instruction. So I literally just taught this. Uh, like, how long Sorry. do I have? 30 seconds left. Um, so you might give the students key words, use images to help them remember, again, explanation examples, then they have to be able to use the words to describe the key characters. So they're using it constantly in context. Um, I hope that was useful, but the final slide is further reading. I'm, I'll share this so that you've got this. Honestly, words are so powerful. And if we don't teach explicitly to our students, particularly our students from disadvantaged backgrounds and with special educational needs and EAL needs, then we're doing them a disservice because they deserve the same access to the vocabulary and language as every other student does. Um, and then the fact that they don't maybe have the access at home um, doesn't mean that we shouldn't provide that. And it's our job as teachers, um, whether you're an English teacher or not, to teach our students tier two vocabulary so that they can become confident and articulate individuals. I hope that was useful. Sorry, <laughs> I went over. <laughs> <laughs> Useful, and yes, you did run over, but very good. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>